Have you ever asked yourself when you're watching a VR video on YouTube, I wonder if I could do that? Well, if so, I made this video just for you. Hello, this is Ender, and welcome to my VR cave. Now that it's been about a year since I started making VR videos, and I have achieved one of my goals becoming a YouTube partner, I would like to focus on my other goals for this channel. I want to hear from more of you. Our sources of VR information and criticism are narrowing, so I challenge you to add your perspective because as is often said, everyone experiences VR differently. The more we hear from, the more we all benefit. First, I want to set the expectation that this is not a complete step-by-step -step tutorial as each major part of the process of making a video would be a full video on its own. And I think that is not the focus of this channel. I will link to other videos that provide that level of detail and direct you to those content creators for questions. I am mostly going to focus on why you should create content rather than how, as the why is the most important and I think most vastly overlooked part when it comes to creating VR content. Also, this video assumes you have a PC VR setup and are not gaming standalone, aka games installed on your Quest, for reasons that I will get into later. However, I have been outlining a series of how-to videos such as picking and using microphones, cameras, green screening, editing, and publishing specifically for VR content creators. If you would appreciate such a series, please let me know in the comments as this would be a bit outside the norm for my channel and only makes sense for me to invest time in if you will want to watch it. My original and primary goal in creating VR videos was to encourage people to give it a try by giving them the best impression I can as to what it's like playing a game in VR, which is hard to do when someone's watching on a flat screen. I try to use a green screen as much as possible to put my physical real self inside the game world and show how all my physical movements track in the game itself and give an impression of how immersive VR can be. Whenever I can, I add VR accessories like the pulse raid overlay to track my heart rate when I'm walking on my treadmill to show what a workout I'm getting or how scared I'm getting, be haptics with feedback overlays so you get an idea how that works, etc. It has long been my hope that my work inspires more to try VR and talk about it, but that's why I do the things the way I happen to. My point is, the way I create matches my goal. Yours may be different from mine, and I welcome you to find your own voice and why. Making it your own is what will keep you motivated or at least remind you why you are putting hours or weeks or months of time that you could be gaming or doing something else, learning how to create content and then finally making it. Ask yourself honestly why you'd want to put yourself out there for all the world to criticize. Some additional reasons that I make content might be ones that matter to you as well. I want to discuss VR with others. This is a niche hobby. You can't discuss it with too many in the real world. Sure, you can chat on Discord with a few and the regular VR podcast that still exists in real time, but at least to me, text chats without faces feel limiting. I love when the rendered reality Discord crew organizes a voice chat as it's so much more engaging when you can hear other people's voices, just as you may have experienced when playing VR in multiplayer with friends. Although I still get nervous when someone says they invested a lot of their hard-earned money in a headset or a treadmill just on my say-so, and that is why I encourage more of you to share your thoughts as well. We need more perspectives. It does mean a lot to me that someone chose to buy something on my say-so and valued my opinion that much. That might be one of the reasons you want to create VR as well, to be heard, listened to, and valued. And speaking of money, that is the absolutely wrong reason to get into creating content. It takes forever to get monetized, and unless you are willing to forego what interests you for the only the latest hype of the week, and I mean cover every trend that week, you won't grow your channel very quickly. Viewers will tell you when you aren't genuinely hyped and you will give up. Remember your goal, hang it on the wall over your monitor and then design your content to achieve your goal. Okay, I maybe haven't hung my motivational poster of my wall, but I kind of think of my gear as 
what keeps me going. My VRcade, if you will, right? Have you ever seen improvisation geniuses like on the show Whose Line Is It Anyways? If so, streaming might be right for you. It is a skill set and requires a nature I don't have much of. I try it every now and then, but I recognize it and I think I can help you decide if it's a format that's right for you. A lot of people who fail think it's an easy way to make money while you just happen to be gaming. If that's the case, you are wasting your time. Speaking of wasting your time, do you see yourself getting this crazy and wanting to invest this much time and money and lighting and things like that? You don't need to to start, but if the idea of getting lighting just right or playing with a new setting interests you, then maybe this is something you want to get into. If not, perhaps not. Maybe just uh, focus on talking to you, your audience with the gameplay running and mainly using your cell phone that you already have. That works too. You will find they're only successful because they have some combination of extraordinary entertaining talent or are top level competitors. They make their viewers feel they are part of the live experience by responding to their texts, cracking one-liners, and usually playing well, all at the same time. And unlike most gaming streamers, they figure out how to do all of this in VR, which is so astronomically harder than sitting in front of one's monitor with the game, a second one showing the chat, and an actual keyboard and mouse to control it all. Even if you aren't on camera, almost no one is watching VR gameplay videos with no entertaining commentary. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. More mobs for more people. Gamer, gamer geek, geek, yeah, gamer geekinator. That makes sense. And you are doing this because you want people to actually watch your video, right? Sure, they make it look easy. And while they probably didn't write a script, I bet they did some planning and I am certain they had to learn how they got everything to work. And yet people say streaming is easy because you don't have to write a script or edit. Speaking of which, recording on the other hand, allows you to preview your mistakes before publishing, but you will spend hours, even weeks or months, finding you have to reshoot entirely and fixing those mistakes. Unlike with streaming, you might be able to get by without camera gear and not showing yourself on camera, which I don't recommend, at least not for a long time. If you are detail focused, that can be helpful. But if you are a perfectionist, you might lose your mind in frustration. And if you are not obsessed with continuously improving, expect few people to ever give watching your content a second chance because you will make mistakes. If your goal is not to entertain, perhaps yours is to inform, which is where I mostly focus my content on, this is a format that's gonna work for you. Even after a year of learning, it takes me at least two full days to go from idea to script, recording, editing, and then finally to uploading. The reality is it often takes a week with having to fix mistakes or even a month or two when troubleshooting games that are in beta or hardware that still is not quite finished yet. Shorts are something I have only briefly experimented with. They are short, which sounds easy. However, that is also a challenge. You need to make every word count as your audience has even less patience than watching a review or much less a stream. Furthermore, it's tough to convey the VR experience in a very narrow frame. You can try to reframe your footage afterwards, or I suggest trying the free Atom plugin, which I will link to. This vertical format for OBS plugin will allow you to set your frame and either record all your gameplay or capture up to a minute of great moments via a buffer, which can save you a lot of editing. I, however, find the format frustrating, so I don't use it a lot, but it will increase your channel views. These next quick tips, as I call them, all deserve separate videos, which I said I'll make if enough people expressed interest in particular topics. And for now, this will get you started and give you an idea of what's involved. You are the director, actor, writer, special effects department, and marketing department. If you want your videos to be seen, you need to keep that in mind before you begin just playing a game or reviewing a piece of gear. Start with a goal in mind. To that end, I will say you need to make your title and thumbnail at least a little interesting. Sure, you don't want to create clickbait, which I define as misleading 
attention grabbing clickbait or thumbnails, but your viewer needs a reason to actually click and watch. I recommend you try Canva, which is free and easy to create a thumbnail. Throw in a scene from your gaming experience, a picture of you, ideally while gaming, and a short word or two in a large format text. Use thumbs.tv to see how ridiculously hard it is to read or see what you wrote on that thumbnail and spend another half hour redesigning it and realize your blurb is the same as your title and then create a new title. Now it's been an hour and you haven't even started editing. Remind yourself why you're spending time doing this so you keep going. Open up Google Docs or your preferred free word processor and at least write out some talking points. Even if you are streaming, writing out a few topics to bring up for discussion when you aren't sure of how to start a conversation with the audience can be really helpful. For recordings, this is a no brainer and will save you so much time in editing so you aren't feeling like you are rambling to yourself in a dark room. Audio is vastly more important than video. Bad audio will have people stop watching faster than poor video. This is probably where you should invest the most, but something better than the very poor Quest 2 or Quest 3 microphones goes a long way. I use a $60 Samsung Q2U when I'm recording, and there are a lot of great options in this price range. If you don't have a sound treated space, a well rated USB dynamic, not condenser microphone will do wonders. If you are streaming, you're going to want an Antlion mod mic, ideally wireless version, which is a lot more, but well worth it in my opinion. Use your smartphone with the Elgato Epoch Cam app for free or with all features unlocked for only eight bucks. The camera phone that you already own is probably great and enough to get you started. Add a cheap tripod or desk clamp with a phone holder and just being on camera for a minute at the beginning or end of your video to comment and connect with your audience has tremendous value. Using a green screen and things like live can be very frustrating and time intensive to learn. So again, save that for later. If there's interest, I will focus on creating a deep dive video on the topic. Learning OBS for PC to stream and or record specifically for virtual reality is one of the most important skills you're going to need. Don't use that unethical Streamlabs pirated garbage. See why in the video I'll link to below. It's free and used by all the top content creators who have learned everything else is usually a waste of time. One day, Liv has said they might be able to create a Quest standalone recording program. They just announced that they are officially partnered with Meta to create such a solution, but that hasn't happened as of yet. So for right now, standalone recording is not something I recommend you get into, even though it's less expensive. The results, I think, just aren't worth it yet, sadly. I mean, Zuck, why buy Oculus if you're going to have such a pain in the butt way to share content on your Facebook platform and it looks like garbage? I mean, ugh, if it was the thing you ever try to put this on. So, yeah, now is not the time to get into standalone recording or streaming without a PC. Now, you don't need something like a 4090 gaming beast. Just something that can run most VR games is probably enough to at least record video if you turn down the resolution on your headset a little bit. Streaming is more demanding and you need at least relatively fast Internet. Just a rough guess. Don't quote me on this, but I think most mid range GPUs you can get will be able to work. You can learn OBS in an hour or two, and then your settings will be saved for next time, at least until you start getting creative and changing it all up and keep learning it over and over again like me. I use DaVinci Resolve. It is as good and in many ways superior than Adobe Premiere. However, it can be very intimidating to learn as many major motion pictures you've seen in theaters are made with it. Watch the Get Started videos I've linked to down below and set aside at least a full day to learn it and edit your first videos. If others here have easier to use free suggestions, please share down below. Some games have their own great soundtracks, but some of those soundtracks include copyrighted music. To be safe, turn down the in-game music levels, but leave the sound effects if you can, 
and use royalty-free music that costs you nothing, like Streambeats, BackingTrack.gg, or others. Now, this isn't to say that you have to have a lot of subscribers to have a valid opinion, but when some spiteful jerk is obviously trolling, I laugh and or pity the fool who is part of the problem that is social media rather than one that is actually trying to use it for good. I say this for you aspiring creators as to how to ignore the sad hecklers having nothing better to do with their lives. If you are making videos, you are putting yourself out there, vulnerable to the slings and arrows of outrageous, ridiculous criticism. You have earned my respect. And even if you decide not to step onto that stage, Hopefully, you now have a modicum of respect for everyone who makes the effort. Ideally, please thank the creators who spent hours, if not days, creating something, probably without being paid for their time, exhibiting great courage and lots of effort. A positive, encouraging comment is the fuel that keeps me and many other creators, I imagine, going. And helpful suggestions on ways to improve next time motivate me to make that improvement and change happen. As always, I hope you found this interesting and thank you so much for watching.